to talk about a song for our bond by Guy Gabriel Kay. At the outset, I will say that this is a five-star read for me. I love this book. This is one of the best books I've read this year. Guy Gabriel Kay is quickly becoming one of my favorite authors. And I have some people to thank for that. I want to thank, just shout out Jake Bishop, who's been screaming Guy Gabriel Kay to anyone who will listen as well as Bridger from the Library Ladder. Both of those guys have some great Guy Gabriel K content that I would highly recommend because I'm kind of new to this author. This is the third book of his that I've read. I've read The Lines of al Rasan, I've read Under Heaven, and A Song for Our Bond. And I will say that three books in, this is an author that, if it stays true, is bound to be one of my favorites of all time. There's just something about his writing that I'll try to talk about here that I really connect with. So, specifically this book, what is a song for our bond? Well, first of all, if you know anything about Guy Gabriel K, you, they always talk about him as his style of fantasy is historical fantasy, which I understand the term even if I disagree with it. For me, historical fantasy is if an author wrote a book of the Napoleonic Wars, where there's fantasy elements going on. To me, that's historical fantasy. What Kay does is he basically, he uses his world building and makes it informed from an era in Earth's past. So in the case of A Song for Our Bond, he looks at Middle Ages France and bases his world upon Middle Ages France. And we get a country in the north of France which is very militaristic, very austere. They worship kind of a vengeful god. They're always at war with one of their neighbors. And we have the south of France, which is our bond, which is much different. They worship a goddess and have courtly ideals. Troubadours are revered, troubadours being the, the poets of this world. And we get courtly love. There's actually a court of love, but art and music are, review, are revered. And this is not a world that is much like its counterpart in the North. It's very different. That isn't to say they don't have armies. One of the biggest characters is a warrior poet and is one of the most revered characters on the continent. Well, to me, it's a different world, even though it's based in France. But I think sometimes the connection with Kay's stories, I think it helps to me bring to life the setting. It was the case in Lines of al Rasan. It was certainly the case in Under Heaven. And it's the case here as well. So something I love in life and I loved in this book is I love connection. I think life is all about connection. And I love most when either I connect or I see people connect with people that are different than them whether it's a different background, different cultural upbringing, whatever it may be. I always love seeing that kind of connection with people. So of course I love it in real life. I love seeing it on the page and I love it in literature. Some of my favorite books deal with this theme where you see people that for, for whatever reasons or from different backgrounds connect with one another. And you see that done so well in this book. Our main protagonist, is a character from the north that comes to the south and he's working as a mercenary and he had kind of become disillusioned with his life up north for certain reasons i won't get into spoilers but he's in the south and you see him immediately even though he's working as a, mis a mercenary he's kind of dismissive of kind of some of these ideals that we have in our bond like why do they care about poetry why do they care about music these are ideals that he doesn't find of value and he kind of scoffs at them and kind of dismisses them. But over the months of this book, little occurrences happen where you see him start to kind of open his eyes and to start to learn. And as someone that loves learning about other cultures, when I see characters on the page do it, I gravitate it very, very much. And I love seeing his eyes open as he starts to connect on a human level with different characters in this story. And through that, those connections, he starts to open his eyes and see what our bond is all about. And of course, it's a fantasy tale, so there's going to be fantastical elements. But Kate kind of downplays a lot of those. He downplays the magic, and I appreciate that. If you look at, I, not to go off on a tangent, but I think there's a whole school of modern fantasy authors that 
have forgotten that the, t the three pillars of storytelling are still plot character world building that they've kind of elevated magic and what their magic is about as being more important than some of these other elements. And for Kay, he doesn't forget that. There are magical elements. And in this book, they're kind of more like a clairvoyant type, and but it's part of the world building. And I think some modern authors have forgotten that, that those are the three things still to this day that generate a great story. Kay hasn't forgotten that because those three elements are all superbly done. I think his world building is the best I've read. Maybe because of the connection with Earth's past, it makes it easier to make it more vivid, but I'm not a visual reader at all. And I see his locations so vividly. And I can't say that about very many authors, including some authors that I consider fantastic world builders. His plotting is, is so superb. Every time, and this happened several times in line of, Lines of All Razon, where Kay takes a tangent, and I'm wondering, why is he taking this tangent? And then you see about halfway through this tangent or this new point of view, why he's going there. And I always feel that he's good at going where it needs to go, but he gives you the payoff right away. I think sometimes an author might take a tangent and not pay it off for hundreds of pages. And I felt that Kay always did this so well. And it felt like all of these different kind of deviations from our main character and characters were meaningful. And it just added to the storyline. And these characters are great. I think I think Blaze, who's the main character here, is my favorite character of all that I've read so far in in Kay's works. He's such a strong protagonist. And I loved seeing, again, seeing his growth throughout this book. There's another aspect of this story that I connected with personally. And listen, my star ratings are all on what I feel. I'm not a professional reviewer. I don't analyze this and tell you that this is the rating because of this. Everything that I say on my channel when I review a book, it's how does this book make me feel? Did I love it? What did I think about that? So all of this is subjective. And there's an aspect of this book that just personally connected with me on a fundamental level. And that is the inclusion of the troubadours and the inclusion of the songs. And these troubadours, the reason I connected with it is because when I first learned about them in my life was my first year in music school. And as someone who's getting older, I think all of us look back on our past and we see certain parts of our life where good or bad, they made us who we are. And I look back in at music school and that's where for me, I took the first steps to what is my life, which is a life of music, a life of music education. And I remember very fondly, first year musicology, Dr. Ronald Gould talking about the troubadours and us listening to them and him extolling just the aspects of courtly love and unrequited love and why this is important in the development of music history. So for me, it brought me back to those times where I personally was taking the first steps of what would be my life for the rest of my life, a life of music and music education. So I felt such a keen connection to this aspect of the story. And I know that's very personal, but it is something that informed for me and it's something that made me just love this book even more because it reminded me of something that was the earliest steps for something that made me the person that I am today. I was on a talk on Joanna's channel about a song for our bond. And I think I said at the beginning that there's nothing I don't like about this book. There's nothing I don't love about this book. I love the main character. I love the supporting characters. I love the plotting. I love the pacing. I love the story. I love where it started. I love where it went. I love the themes, especially the connections between the characters. I love the troubadours. I love the world building. If you get the point, I love this book. And it touched me in such a fundamental way that this is one of my best books of the year. Guy Gabriel Kay is quickly becoming an author that I just value. And I can't wait to read more. I have River of Stars right over there, ready to start tonight. It'll be my fourth Guy Gabriel Kay book. But as far as a song for our bond is concerned, it is a standalone. And if anything that I've said about this book piques your interest, I give it my highest recommendation. 
Song for Our Bond by Guy Gavre OK is one of my best books this year, and I plan on rereading it next year, and I don't do that very often. Once again, thank you, Bridger and Jake, for introducing me to this author, because BookTube does not talk about Guy Gavre OK enough, and they should. I will. <laughs> hey, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you've read this book, I would love to talk with you in the comments section below. Label any spoilers for anybody else that might be down there, but I hope that a lot of you will read this book. If at whatever point you watch this review, weeks, months, years from now, please drop me a comment. Let me know if you love this book as much as I do. This is an all-timer for me. I'm so glad that I read this and can't wait to read more by this author. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Twitter and Goodreads. I'd love to interact with you there. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.